Aloha and whakalofalahi atu. I'm going to take you on a little uh, Pacific holiday. I know of a shore glistening in the islands where the sun resplendent in clouds also ripples upon the sensuous sands. And the muscadine of crushed grapes will astonish exotic lands where the pheasant, a flaming paradise, will relinquish its lush colours and praise to the Pacific beauty. Friend Apani's leaning into the constellation swan spread pollen into her lakes, while at dusk young lovers, after celebrating, drift out in canoes, garlanded in hibiscus, played upon by winds, following the albatross out to silent seas. And the island, when I dream of its solitary bays, eating mango under shady palm trees, enhances migrant dolphins crossing the equator. One morning, a schooner hit a reef on the coast of Liku. It was cloudy, but I could make out a white woman swimming with the fish. I ran down to the sh shore, tired of wreckage and survivors, and with many people behind me, we helped one man who clutched a Bible and four Rarotongans who sailed the boat. Further away, we wait for she who rose out of the sea covered in weed. The children ran and stole her skin. They stayed in our village, showed us where heaven is. The Bible dried in the sun until old man Tingi cooked the pages. But now that we knew where heaven is, they pointed to our chest and said, a God dwells there. And Jesus, his son, waits to go and join him. I observed from a distance until I met the woman on the road. She is so white, I told her so. I told her again because she wanted to see the place where the rain breathes. It was late afternoon when I swam with her, hidden by an eclipse and two shadows from a turtle. Who made you so white, I said. God made me out of dreams and wood, she replied. I bury my mouth in this God. You burn my lips not used to sharks, she said. The sun takes the shadows away, goals come out of the horizon, we say goodbye where a church is growing. And to mirror the heavenly bodies, a dancer whose eyes went through a sea change, cast a rhapsody composed of profuse tunes towards a hibiscus on her dress. The wealth of her hair blended strangely with the bougainvillea, and I became nostalgically sad when the scents unite and the smell is like exuberant fruits of Polynesia. And the islanders, when a fervent moon rises, would gather in one village for a festive night and sing of the land's health and fertility. And her silence, when I stole a glance, is the dawn that has astounded many foreign eyes. And then I dreamed I kissed the ocean's lips, when from volatile shores in the distance, a woman, the bronze body of Aotearoa, rose from a medley containing many mosaic blossoms. The mercurial degree of forest rivers lit in her healthy eyes the silk peaks of the southern Alps, and the horizons to honour her birth looked back, then migrated into her soul. A fawn paused to breathe the perfumes from her hair, while nocturnal creatures came towards her tears. And among the illicit fields, drowsy from drinking her water, ethereal animals returned to the distance. You are the one fruit in my soul. You sometimes blossom in winter, but it is spring when you beautify the horizons, the clouds rise triumphantly. At night, a nocturne of waves, sad of its eternal sound, awoke me. Though I live far from its grief, I remember the direction you left on. Sounds that could only come from you echoed through the pineapples. And to have seen you in Lava Lava, the fire of Polynesia, I will take you to my mother's country, where hibiscus flowers took their pollen into canoes drifting out to sea.